Miss Morgan here. I'm going to read The Magic School Bus Gets Ants in Its Pants. You never know who's going to show up for a visit in Miss Frizzle's class. Take the other morning, when Keisha arrived. She was following a tiny guest. Me and my friend, the ant. Isn't she amazing? I wonder where she's headed, asked Keisha. This is no time for antics, said Carlos. We've got to pick a project for the science fair. The Frizz was tossing things from the closet. Ah, the passion of science, we heard her say. Where is the, oh, oh, there it is. The Frizz put something on her head. It seemed to be a pair of antennae. She looked like our visitor. In the meantime, Keisha had lost her aunt. Arnold found her on, the, on his Mallow Blaster cookie. So that's why she came in here, said Keisha. She was looking for food. Then Keisha got an idea. Maybe we could do something about the ant for our science fair, she said. Well, said Dorothy Ann, according to my research, where you find one ant, there are usually more nearby. That's right, Dorothy Ann, agreed Miss Frizzle. Ants live together in nests. But what could we do with ants, asked Phoebe. Keisha looked at Liz. The class lizard was holding a video camera. That's it, yelled Keisha. We'll make a movie. Phoebe shook her head. At my old school, lizards weren't allowed to make movies, she said. I'll write it, offered Carlos. Phoebe wanted to help Carlos. She would be the director, and he and her aunt would be the star. The rest of us would play ants. Liz, it seemed, would do the filming, and Miss Frizzle would take care of costumes. Just as Keisha began to give orders, her aunt ran out the room, and we all followed. Keisha's aunt soon caught up with lots of other ants. Look at them all, exclaimed Keisha. How do I know which one is mine? I've lost my star. Dorothy Ann had a book about ants. According to my research, your star has been telling the other ants about Arnold's cookie, she explained. Excellent observation, Dorothy Ann. Ants don't really talk, said the Frizz, but they do communicate. The Frizz told us that the food-finding ant is a forager ant. I've got it, shouted Ralphie. We'll make a western starring the ant that rounds up food. We can call it Food Dude, said Carlos. All of a sudden, Miss Frizzle got that look she sometimes gets. Then the magic school bus honked. All aboard, Miss Frizzle said. We each found a seat and fastened our safety belts. It's good to be prepared when you're going on a field trip with Miss Frizzle. Anything can happen. Soon the bus was spinning and shrinking. When it stopped, the bus looked like Arnold's cookie. It tasted like it too. But where were we? Different ants do different jobs, explained Miss Frizzle. Remember the forager ants that find food? Suddenly, the bus was lifted up. Hey, we're being foraged, cried Wanda. Keisha, is the movie going to star a forager ant? Phoebe asked. And are we going to co-star as food? Arnold added. He sounded nervous. No, said Keisha. The bus landed with a thud. Where are we? asked Dorothy Ann. We are on location, said Miss Frizzle. Keisha looked out the window. It's an ant hill, she called. It's perfect. We'll meet the ants up close and personal. Come on, Liz. Liz and Keisha left the bus, but not for long. Hundreds of ants came after them. Who let them on set? yelled Keisha. They look like they're guarding the nest, said Phoebe. Great, said Ralphie. The movie can star a star guard ant. Ralphie said, it'll be perfect for the widescreen with stereo sound and smell o vision said Miss Frizz. We had no idea what the Frizz was talking about. Guard ants use their antennae to smell if we're friend or foe, she told us. Ants don't understand words, but they do understand smells. The ants began to smell us. The ants are checking to see if we smell like them, explained the Frizz. Their bodies make scented chemicals called pheromones. And with that, she pushed a handle on the bus and sprayed us. Now we smell like these ants, said the Frizz. So the guard ants will let us into the nest. She led us from the bus. As I always say, class, when visiting a nest, smell like the rest. The guard ants checked us with their antennae. They wanted to be sure we were friendly. Then we entered the tunnel to their nest. Hey, look at this, yelled Tim. He pointed to hundreds of ants running back and forth. The place was crawling with them. Okay, places everyone, yelled Keisha in her best movie director's voice. 
but we weren't quite sure how to act like ants. What about makeup, Keisha? asked Dorothy Ann. And what's the plot? Who's the star? asked Carlos. Maybe we should get to know the ants better, Phoebe suggested. Good idea, Phoebe, said the frizz. Understanding begins with observation, she told us. I love it, Keisha said. See the ant, feel the ant, be the ant. We watched some ants in action. This ant's rubbing its head and this one is licking itself, said Phoebe. They're cleaning themselves, Tim figured out. We saw two ants passing food from mouth to mouth. One of the ants gave a sticky blob to Arnold. He knew what it was right away, part of his cookie. Oh, sure, give it back to me after you've chewed it, Arnold grumbled. But a movie about ants sharing food didn't seem very exciting. Carlos crossed that idea off his list. Okay, he said, this movie is not going to be about a forager ant, a guard ant, or a food carrying ant. Keisha was still looking for the star of our movie. As she walked toward one of the tunnels, some of the ants grabbed her and raced away. Then some other ants picked up the rest of us. Now things were getting very exciting. We were part of a great chase scene. Suddenly they dumped us in front of a chamber. Wait a minute, yelled Tim. What's in there? He pointed into a room where ants were carrying something. They're like little worms, observed Dorothy Ann. An ant gave one to Arnold. You look like you're holding a baby, said Dorothy Ann. Maybe it's a baby ant. Miss Frizzle explained that baby ants are called larvae. Just one was a larva, and that's what Arnold was holding. Who ever heard about a movie about larvae? asked Keisha. We watched the ants move the larvae. I bet they're trying to keep the larvae warm, said Tim. Miss Frizzle explained that these were nurse ants. Their job is to move the young around the nest to keep them the right temperature. And when they get a little older, the larvae will become pupae. But Keisha didn't want to make a movie about a larva or a pupa. Where's the excitement? She asked. Well, what about an egg? Asked Phoebe. Where do ant eggs co come from anyway? Good question, Phoebe, said Miss Frizzle. The eggs came from the queen. Keisha loved it. That's it, a royal star, she cried. Carlos and Keisha began to look for the queen. While they were looking, Phoebe noticed water coming through the walls. Heads down, called the frizz. The nest started to shake and the tunnel caved in. As we picked ourselves up, ants ran past us. There were ants everywhere. Look, yelled Tim, they're already repairing the nest. That's right, said Miss Frizzle, they're builder ants. Keisha was still on a mission. To the queen, she shouted. There's only one and she's our star. At first we didn't even see her. There she is, said the frizz. She's the biggest one. But she's not doing anything, said Wanda. Miss Frizzle said the queen was the only ant who laid eggs. Keisha was upset. The queen laid an egg, the end, she said. I thought a movie about ants would be perfect for our science project, but I was wrong. She turned and ran out of the nest. Phoebe found Keisha sitting in the rain. No movie, no story, no star, Keisha said sadly. What kind of star just sits there and lays eggs? Well, without the queen, there wouldn't be eggs, Phoebe said. So, said Keisha, without the ants that bring food, there wouldn't be a queen. Suddenly, she and Phoebe understood. All the ants work together. Without the forager ants, there wouldn't be food. Without the builder ants, there wouldn't be a nest. Without the guard ants, the nest would be attacked. Keisha and Phoebe ran toward the bus. They're all stars, exclaimed Keisha. Every ant in an ant hill has a job to do, just like we each have a job to make this movie. Forget the movie, said Arnold. There's a mudslide. It will wipe out the ant hill, Keisha said. She spotted a magnifying glass on the ground. Action, yelled the frizz. We grabbed the magnifying glass to block the mud and we saved the nest just in time. Back at school, our science movie was a big success. We each had a different part, and the movie couldn't have been made without everyone's help. The end. Bye, everybody.